Maria is a unique character in the Silent Hill universe. She's not a real person, and her origins are something of a mystery. Who is she exactly? How much of her is Mary, and how much is her own unique person? The symbolism of both Mary and Maria is linked to the larger religious symbolism of Silent Hill too, specifically the use of Christian imagery and themes. References to the Bible are strewn throughout the game, and in many ways, its primary female characters are easily relatable to some of Christianity's most important women. The most obvious would be Mary, as in the Mother of Christ, one of the holiest Christian women. The game endows Mary with the aspect of holiness akin to the biblical figure. The photo James carries of his wife is an idyllic vision. Her clothes are soft, feminine colors, haloed by the light of the flashlight, hinting at angelic and holy aspects. But let's not forget the Bible had two Marys, the mother and Mary Magdalene, whose reputation in popular culture is that of a less than pious woman turning a sexual trade. Mary of Magdala was the only female apostle and the only one to write her own gospel. Christian tradition surrounding Mary and Jesus has some interesting connotations for Mary and Maria. Mary Shepherd also has a virgin birth through intercourse with a god. Maria is created through Mary and Silent Hill, and no mortal man has any part in the proceedings. Maria is created solely for the redemption of man, a specific man in our case and she dies multiple times in order to redeem him. In this scenario, Mary Shepherd quite literally takes on the role of Mary, Mother of God, and Maria becomes the Christ, born to redeem the sinful man. This story is hardly a direct metaphor, and there are other biblical figures who can be tied to Maria. Take, for instance, the unruly first wife of Adam, named Lilith. The Bible is a little strange about the creation story. There are two stories, and it implies a woman is created twice. In Genesis 1.27, he created man, male and female he created them. Later in Genesis 2.22, he again describes making woman in the classic removes rib from man scene. One popular theory is that one of the women is Lilith, adapted from other mythology of the time from a female demon who was said to kill pregnant women. Stories say that Lilith was the first woman made by God for Adam, who refused to lay down peacefully for him and be his wife, and ran off to do her own thing. There are shades of Lilith in both Mary and Maria. For one, Lilith has often been portrayed as a sexual predator, a seductress or succubus, out to tempt poor souls into damnation. Maria's role as the seductress leading James astray has shades of this weaponized sexuality, but Silent Hill turns this somewhat on its head. Where Lilith is a vile demon leading good men astray, James is condemned as a criminal. Maria is a temptation, a way of testing James' spirit, a further measure of his desire for redemption. In this way, she's performing a good deed, because her actions allow him the chance to reject her and thus embrace redemption. Maria wavers between the positions of Eve and Lilith. At times, she seems more pleased with, or at least resigned to, her role. At others, she appears to rebel or rail against it, angered by the injustice of being created solely to die for a man who may not be worth the sacrifice. All at once, shades of Eve, Lilith, and even the Christ exist in Maria's struggle to accept that she was created for this man, that she must die, she will die, if he is to redeem himself. The change from Mary to Maria for her name is interesting. While Maria is a derivative of the name Mary and the Spanish form of the name, it is not as commonly associated with the same holiness and reverence that the name Mary is in English. 
Maria is a far more common first name, while Mary maintains a bit of distance. Maria is then, of course, more sexually available, because she is an ordinary person, not a holy being. Maria is a manifestation of the town. She presumably follows some sort of command or imperative, either because it is how she was created to be, or because there's a force in the town driving her to do so. Either way, she was made to test James and act as part of his ordeal in Silent Hill. Most of her behavior is centered upon him, either rebelling at the idea of having to reduce herself to his existence, or being angry that he is not as centered upon her as she is upon him. She spends most of her time trying to manipulate him into being in a romantic relationship with her, one that is most likely tragically doomed. There's only one behavior that seems to be outside this set pattern, her concern for Laura. Though the little girl never interacts with her, Maria is afraid for her the moment she sees Laura. She runs after her when she leaves the bowling alley and insists they must chase her. While James does so because Laura knows Mary, Maria does so because she cares about the child. In Brookhaven, she says she feels it's up to me to protect her. These details add fascinating depth to her character and raise questions about her origins. It confirms she is in some way related to Mary, that she was born from the real person. Because Mary cared about Laura, so does Maria. After James remembers the truth of his crime, James faces Pyramid Head one last time. With him is Maria hung upside down, once more to die for James's crimes. This is her crucifixion, the final sacrifice for James's soul. But why is she killed here, after he's remembered the truth? What is the point now? Before, her deaths were meant to deny him the placating distraction of her presence and remind him of the truth of Mary's death. Here, it is a punishment, just as James says in his speech after she dies. He wanted to be punished. He needed them to punish him. He's talking to Pyramid Head, but Maria must be part of the punishment, because without her presence, Pyramid Head would have no one to kill to punish James with. Pyramid Head and Maria are working together. The cameras in Silent Hill are often crooked, correlating with the twisted view of reality the characters have. Here, in this scene, James begins on his knees, talking about the truth and his need to punish himself. The longer he talks, the more the camera straightens out. Here, at the end, he is seeing reality for what it is, and his skewed vision straightens out. It takes Maria's death to finally set him straight. She dies to redeem his sins. Depending on the player's actions, the final boss of Silent Hill 2 may be Maria or Mary. For most of the endings, it's Maria in the guise of James's wife. The final temptation is not a version of Mary, but a near copy of her. Maria's last attempt to make James choose her. It's tragic however you look at it. In every ending besides the Maria ending, James must deny Maria in order to redeem himself. Yet in doing so, he denies Maria her very reason for existence. She was created for him, to die for him, to live for him. Without him, who is she? Here, at the end, she is tormented by this question, and reacts to his rejection by transforming into a monster. Whether this is part of Silent Hill's test, or if Maria is acting alone here, we can't be sure. Once again, she hangs upside down, her flesh blackened and damaged. The upside down hanging in both this scene and the one before it calls to mind the Christian martyrs killed by the Romans, who were hung upside down out of respect to Christ. Butterflies swarm around her and attack, associating her with these Japanese symbols of death and the soul. She almost appears to be wearing a nun's habit. Maria is something holy, associated with faith and death, but she's also something demonic, twisted. She is Lilith, she is Mary, she is the Christ, but most of all, she is Maria. 
And here she takes a final stand for herself. She turns on her reason for existing, redefining her life by choosing to do something for herself after having died so many times for James. It is a choice that kills her, but with this final death, she dies for no one save herself.